So I was looking for a tutorial on how to make a Roblox GUI, however there really aren't any good ones, so I set out to make one of my own. I decided to ask in my Discord server what type of GUI to make, and the higher vote went to... Yeah, it was this. Okay, but if you count fighting as an FPS game, then FPS is a tie and there is no ways I'm making an authentic Tetris rotation system for a main menu. But you know what, if this video gets a thousand likes, then maybe I'll attempt it. Okay, but for making an actual main menu, first we need some inspiration. What are other FPS games doing and, and how can I steal their content and make it mine and get millions of dollars from their idea? Copy and paste. Now, let's break it down. First we have the background. Next, we have the two buttons on the top left that say Home and Operators. Then we have a multiplayer button and an options button. Not too sure what these other buttons are, however we can modify them for our own game. On the bottom left it displays the ping and the FPS, and on the bottom right there seems to be some random text. Next we can see our party, rank or level, coins and another settings. Well, we can change this all to suit our game. Okay, let's start up Roblox Studio and we can start working our menu. In Start a GUI, we can create a screen GUI, and in that we can create a frame. Let's also resize the frame to take up our entire screen. When I first started making GUIs, I was very confused on how the size and position worked, so I'll explain that now. You can see in the size, there are four values. The first two, that are actually the size and percentage, and the second two, which are the size and pixels. However, the percentage is actually divided by 100 meaning that if you wanted to fill 50% of the screen, you'll type 0.5 instead of 50. Otherwise, if you did that, you would end up with a GUI 50 times the size of the player's screen. The first set of numbers is actually the x-axis, which is left and right, whilst the second is the y-axis, which is up and down. The position actually works the exact same as how the size works, however, it changes what the object is instead of the size of the object. Okay, step one. We need to make a background. I'll add an image label and add a random background I found online. However, you can add any background you want. I'll then add an overlay, which is just adding another background, but instead with a semi-transparent PNG. Oh yeah, also remember to name your stuff, trust me, it will be important later. Next, we can import the reference from earlier and we can make some frames to outline how we want the layout to look. I'm copying it for this video, however, you should make yours unique. You can then delete the reference when you are finished with it. I then decided to make my layout semi-transparent, although it does not matter. And, to be completely honest with you, you don't even need to make a layout at all, however, it will be more difficult without one. Now that we have the layout set, we can put everything we had away and we can start working on the actual UI, because right now all we really have that we are keeping is the background. If you don't know what to start, then just find whatever's the most difficult. In my case, the thing that was the most difficult was the lobby. I made a frame that we can change the transparency of later, and I made some image labels which I added. Three for the players, and one that was slightly further away for yourself. I wrote a little bit of code, but I completely messed it up, so just ignore that completely. As I tested it out, I realized that ignore GUI inset was not on, so I left a space for the Roblox GUI and we'll click on screen GUI and then we'll click on ignore GUI inset. Next I'll add some text labels for the currency system and a ranking system. Along with that I'll add a settings button. Just go with the flow and look at many references. I have an image in my mind of the final product so I'm working my way towards that. The reason I made the currency and the rank value is null, because null is essentially just meaning false, or it could mean nothing. This will then be changed later in the scripting. Okay, pause. Now is probably a good time to mention that for the entire GUI, I'll be only using the values in percentage for the size and placement. This is because everybody has a different screen size, meaning if it's in pixels, then it will be off the screen when changing the resolution. Anyways, back to the video. I'm inserting text buttons for the actual buttons and putting text labels over them. This allows you to have a nice looking text while still being able to click on the whole button. I then added a music button which should have actually been a store button and the music button should have gone on the top right where the settings button is. After that I decided to work on the bottom large button and essentially I added a text button and colored it, then I added a frame on the bottom of it for some text and a background on the image label. 
I then actually ended up changing the background, adding a cat on it and the same overlay from the main background we made earlier. However, this time I made it a lot more dark and added a lock on it signaling that it wasn't available yet. For the other buttons under play, I just repeated the same steps I did with the play button. In fact, I actually just copied the play button and reformatted it. Just remember to keep your GUI consistent. I then made them grey and I realised I only wanted two buttons instead of four, so I deleted the other two. Next, I decided to add an options button on the bottom along with an FPS and ping display. After that, I added some icons around the currency and the ranks. I then added some text on the top that said home and lobby. I also added an underline under both of them which will show you which one you have currently selected. We'll change the underline in the coding part. After testing it out, I realized that some of the buttons in our GUI is going over the in-game GUI, so I need to move them all to the right. As I say, learn from my mistakes, do as I say, not as I do. Okay, the GUI is looking good, but now it's time for the scripting. Now, for this video, there isn't much I can explain, but I'll go over it generally. If you guys want, I'll make an entire series on scripting as I feel like that's a lot of you and this video just won't be enough. In the screw GUI, we can create a local script. The reason it's a local script is because if we want to make it server side, then if anybody clicks on something, it would replicate that for everybody else. However, because it's a local script, it will just do that for us. But for now, let's just focus on the actual coding. I'll start off easy with the lobby and home buttons. For now, let's just make it if you click on it, then it will underline the one you clicked on. But let's make the other one not underlined as well. In the script, we can essentially define both the player and the main GUI in our variables. Then we can define the home button and the lobby button. Next we can say that the lobby button underline visibility is false and we can leave the home button visibility as true. Now we'll add a listener to each of the buttons, one on the home button and one on the lobby button. And essentially we'll say if the button is clicked then we'll run this function. In the function, we can say if the home button is underlined, then it will end the script. Otherwise, make the home button visibility true and the lobby button underline visibility false. And now obviously, we'll just write the opposite for the other one. Now if we test it, we can see that if we click on the home button or the lobby button, it will actually underline it. Next, we can work on the lobby. We don't want to always see blank images, do we? For now, we'll just make the lobby players variables and set them all to null and start coding it. I'll add a placeholder image and make it so it uses our player's thumbnail or if it can't show the player's thumbnail it will use the placeholder image. I'll also add an if statement for the other players and say if the variable does not null then display the image otherwise just display the placeholder. Now for the currency system. I'll add a starting balance variable and make that equal to 100. Along with the starting rank that will make 1. Next I'll set the text labels to be equal to the starting balance or the rank. So I realized I don't know how to get the player's FPS, so later I just changed that to the version. However, for the ping, you can get the player's network ping and change the text to that every 5 seconds to update it. I also made an options GUI with a few buttons I'll not go into in this video because it's simply just too complicated. Lastly, I decided to fix up the GUI because earlier I accidentally made some of the GUI parts size in pixels instead of the size in percentage. Anyways, what do you think of this video? Leave me some constructive criticism in the comments and tell me what I can improve for the next one.